as with most ancient cultures, there's a lot of junk we just don't really know about. That's what archaeologists are for. But some things can't be explained fully, leaving us to just speculate and make YouTube videos for you to watch late at night when you're bored. I'm Adam Andrews, and today on Bumblebee, you're watching the top 10 unsolved mysteries from ancient Rome. Part 2, with a vengeance. Number 10! We're making a video about mysteries from ancient Rome, and you think I'm not going to talk about Pompey's own villa of mysteries? <laughs> you're balking, mate! You're balking! The Villa of Mysteries was discovered back in 1909 after being buried at Pompeii. One of the more mysterious finds was a wall fresco that depicts what could be a play or wedding or maybe an initiation ceremony to an ancient Roman cult known as the Cult of Dionysus. We don't really know anything about what this cult actually did. They were obviously very good at keeping things under wraps. What happens in the cult stays in the cult. Or however that saying goes, I don't really remember. No one was allowed to know what happened in their initiation, rituals, or really anything. I mean, they weren't even allowed to write it down. But if that was the case, why was someone allowed to paint it on a wall? Make it make sense, bro. Make it make sense. Number 9. Family Traits I think this one is kind of really interesting. There is a village in western China where the people who all live here, meaning their families are all historically from here, have blue eyes and blonde hair. While not exactly uncommon, I guess, the sheer amount of people specifically from here that have these particular traits that are different from the black hair and dark eye color of most people in China suggest that everyone who is native to this area may actually be descended from an ancient Roman legion. I have the blood of a legionnaire flowing through these veins! That'd be so cool. In 53 BC, Marcus Crassus lost pretty badly in a fight in what is modern day Afghanistan. It's believed that the Roman soldiers that survived traveled as mercenaries, just trying to make a few bucks, and they apparently wandered as far as this village in western China. DNA tests on the villagers of this area actually do show that they are 50% Caucasian, which is super interesting, but we don't know for sure if it was these traveling for sale legionnaires that were the cause. And maybe I'm just a silly goose, but I don't even know how we would be able to find that out with some kind of archaeological evidence. Number 8. Misleading In 2010, we discovered a coffin in the city of Gabi. A coffin made of lead. It was also, interestingly enough, in the shape of a burrito, giving it the nickname Lead Burrito. You won't be seeing me going into Chipotle to ask for that one. Yes, I'll take one lead burrito, extra deceased Roman inside, please and thank you. No. The University of Michigan, the ones who led the expedition that found the coffin, said that lead coffins like this are extremely rare. But on top of that, this one specifically is incredibly heavy, like 1,000 pounds, letting us know exactly how expensive it must have been. The mysterious part comes to play when we realize we have um, absolutely no clue whatsoever who the adult man inside this coffin is. We know he was around at the time of Nero, but there is no evidence inside this burrito about the life this man lived. No extra toppings in this burrito, just lead and meat. Yum. Number 7. The Ninth Legion In ancient Rome, there was a legion that was known to be the best of the best the Romans had to offer. It was known as the Ninth Legion. Being the best of the best came with being put into the harshest of harshest of areas to fix Rome's problems. So these boys in red were sent to England, past Hadrian's Wall, where they would fight against the Picts. But then, they were just never heard from again, ever. Now the obvious answer here is that they got absolutely demolished by the Picts. The last thing we heard was from the year 108, and we know that the Legion had a pretty brutal surprise attack in Caledonia due to some Roman guards falling asleep on the job, which um, doesn't really seem like best of the best behavior now does it? What makes this whole thing really weird is that in 121, there are some bricks that have the seal of the 9th legion on them, which is about 13 years after their last mention. And on top of that, there is an officer from that legion who shows up as the governor of Arabia in 142. I think these could have just been survivors who were taken out of England after the best of the best went bust. But who knows? Not me. Number 6. La Custa the Poisoner Nero, 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 you little rascal, you. Emperor Nero was known as one of the worst of the worst, and he was also known for having a few people, um, be lifed. What better way to do that than with poison? The chemist Lacosta was the one who became his poison expert, but she's also kind of unfairly known as the world's first serial delifer because of that. 
kind of unfairly because it could be completely true. We just have no idea. We know from historians at the time that Nero and even his mother liked Lacosta so much that he actually helped set her up with a school dedicated to creating new poisons and all kinds of research surrounding poison. But we don't actually have any of that research. There is no proof of any of it. But she was executed by the guy who took on Nero's job after he was gone, and I can't help but think there is a decent reason for that. Maybe because of all the people she poisoned and helped poison? We will never know. Probably. I mean, we could. I don't know. Number 5. Play that liar to the fire. While we're talking about Nero, he actually has a mystery all of his own. Nero was very famously a fan of music. He would often sing and play instruments. And he was also a fan of being utterly insane. Ending lives and forcing people to party all night, have massive parties, and eat until they puked. So when you hear a rumor that this crazy emperor may have caused the Great Fire of Rome that destroyed a lot of the city on July 18th in the year 64, you might believe it. And you might even believe the rumor that he also played the liar while the city burned. It just kind of all checks out for how crazy he is, but obviously we have no evidence of that actually happening. Neither of those two rumors can be proven, especially not now, 1,958 years later. What we do know is that the Emperor did benefit quite a bit from the destruction the fire caused. It allowed him to change the aesthetics of the city, persecute thousands of Christians, and introduce new building codes. But it also turns out Nero may have been 35 miles away in Antium, but I mean, prove it! You can't. I, I can't. Number 4. Ham Hill. Ham Hill in England is the location of an archaeological dig by the universities of Cambridge and Cardiff, where we made the crazy discovery of the graves of a lot of people, dating back to the time in history when Romans made their way into England. The part that is so alarming, other than finding a pile of corpses, is that these particular bodies had been stripped of their um, exterior layers and chopped up. It's gruesome. But oddly, most of the skeletons found here actually belonged to women, and most of which were women in their early 20s. But this wouldn't be a mystery if those were all the facts. We actually don't know what happened here. The obvious answer is some kind of mass life-ending escapade, but why, damn it, why? We don't know. Number three, hard talker. Surprise, you've met the afterlife. Were you a good person? Well, if you weren't, if you were a threat to your community, say in ancient Rome, then it's pretty likely you would have been buried face down. So there, take that. Hold up, they cut out your tongue and put a stone in your mouth? What in the Gaius Octavius Caesarian, what is going on here? That's probably what the team who unearthed the grave of a man from a Northamptonshire site dating back to Roman Britain probably said. They found a man who was buried face down in his grave, missing his tongue with a stone in its place. Pretty odd. Infection in the bones of his jaw show it was removed while he was still alive. And the practice of replacing a missing body part with another object was definitely known to happen in Roman Britain, although it was rather rare. The only thing is we have absolutely no idea what this man had done. Maybe he just really talked too much. Maybe he lost his tongue to something completely unrelated to his delifing, and this stone was just to replace it. We don't actually know, and there is no evidence to tell us. Theories? Number 2. Skulls of London. I'm not really sure how this happens, how it was discovered or anything, but in 1988, 39 skulls were excavated really close to the Museum of London in London. Those 39 skulls were alarming enough, but the 39 soon expanded into hundreds of skulls. Now, possible theories included that the skulls belonged to executed criminals, gladiators, or even soldiers that had done the Monty Python, you know, run away! Most of the skulls seemed to have been from men, and most indicated that they suffered rather brutal offings. Some people think the skulls were dumped in display pits. Some people think they were placed there purposely. To make matters worse, not too far away, we also discovered what seems to be an ancient Roman cooking pot with bits of humans in it. All of this creepy stuff was found in an area no bigger than a swimming pool, which makes it very obvious that it was all a part of the same thing, possibly part of some crazy Roman cult. Maybe it's all just a big coincidence. We don't have the evidence to know. I don't think I could really tell you exactly what in the name of Mark Anthony went on here, but I do know that it were not good. Number one, mole warfare. Who would have thought chemical warfare would make for a great story? 
especially 2000 year old ancient chemical warfare. Back in the Roman city of Dura Europis in Syria, a siege took place between the Roman and the Persian forces. During said battle, the Persians dug siege tunnels underneath the walls of the Roman city. The Romans knew and built their own tunnels to cut them off. The problem with tunnels like that is you have absolutely no idea of where exactly the opposing team is going to show up. The Romans ended up building their tunnel higher than the Persians did, so you got like a like this kind of situation going on. Now, archaeological digs have discovered about 19 Roman soldiers in these tunnels. But it seems that these soldiers were not stabbed to cause their demise, but instead, they seem to have suffocated. Well, how the heck did that happen? According to archaeologist Simon James, he believes that the Persians actually allowed the Romans to dig into their tunnel and then use the elevated position with a sort of chimney effect to set a mix of bitumen and sulfur on fire and let the fumes do the deed. But, and say it with me, there is absolutely no evidence of this. Yes, good, good, you, you, you've caught on, very nice. Alrighty bees, that's all the game show information I have for you today. Learn something new? Have some theories? Leave it all below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe here at Bumblebee. I've been your host, Adam Andrews, and until next time, toodles, my doodles. Back in the Roman city of Dura Europis. Yeah, I said that right, but why did I stop? Number six, Lacusta the Prisoner. Or oh, that's not even what that says. I can't read. That's probably what the team who unearthed the grave of a man from Northamptonshire say. Damn it.